Hey everyone, what is going on? Master Arch Live, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys through my Gunslinger build. This is a build more orientated around pistol skills, so getting the most power out of pistols you can possibly have, and as such, involves akimbo pistols as well as a pistol secondary. Uh, there's a lot of skills to pick up for this to try and hone in on the pistol skills, make them as powerful as we possibly can. So I'll take you guys through them, what pistols I'm using, and then we'll get into some gameplay from there. This build I would recommend mainly for Deathwish and downwards. I wouldn't recommend it for one down. I don't think it quite works as well on that on that uh, kind of difficulty level because I run with the Crook perk deck for this rather than Rogue. So I don't know. You could try and use it on one down. You might be able to pull it off, but it's it just makes it more difficult. And with one down being as tough as it is, I don't know, I, I'd like to have the best possible build that I could have. So that's why I'd stick to dodge that I've already shown you guys. So we'll get into the build and we'll start off with the skills. So let's go straight into that. Okay, so looking at what we've picked up from the Mastermind skill tree, we focus more on medic skills here. So for this one, I focused on the kind of Dr. Bag route rather than the Ammo Bag route. I just feel like survivability is more important with this build. And with the amount of ammo that you have, you can pretty much keep yourself going with ammo pickups. So that's the rate I've gone. You could switch to ammo bags if you wanted rather than these medic skills and go up for fully loaded. But personally, I've gone for med skills. So we've got Combat Medic Basic, Quick Fix Ace, Combat Doctor Ace, and Inspire Ace. Now, I've gone for Dr. Bags over first aid kits. I just don't really use first aid kits that much. I just think being able to restore all your downs rather than just fill up your health, as I said in the last video, it's just much easier. So that's why we're going for Combat Doctor. If you want, if it's personal preference, you want to go first aid kits, just transfer those nine points over to there. No difference. Having Inspire Ace is, you know, one of the most important skills in the game for Loud. For those of you who can pick it up, being able to shout crewmates up is just a detrimental skill. You really, really need that. So I picked it up because I was getting med skills. And then Quick Fix, I chose over um, Painkillers only because the amount of time it takes to deploy them is reduced. So if you're in a bit of a situation, an emergency, you need to get the, the Dr. Bags down, it's a lot quicker. It's just as simple as that. That's why I went for Quick Fix. Um, and then on top of that, crew members that use your first aid kits or Dr. Bags take 15% less damage for two minutes. So I don't know, that's probably negligible. Probably doesn't make a great difference, but I've chosen it. So that's the route I've gone. Uh, looking at controller subtree, we got basic for forced friendship just to be able to tie up a few more civvies and tie them faster. And then basic stable shot from sharpshooter just to increase weapon stability. So looking in the enforcer skill tree and the tank subtree, we got basic resilience, which was only to get us up to basic transporter, which is just simply to throw bags a bit further. It can be really useful on certain heists, and that's basically why I picked it up. There was no other reason for it. Uh, and then in the ammo specialist subtree, we aced scavenger because my attitude is that if we're not deploying ammo bags, we can at least pick up ammo boxes off cop a lot easier and being able to get an extra ammo box for every sixth enemy you kill as well as ha not having to travel as far to pick them up because the pickup range is increased makes life a lot easier and you can run off your own kind of run off your own steam I suppose is the phrase uh, on on your own you won't need to re really report to my bags much I reckon one or two uses in an entire heist and you'd be absolutely fine sometimes I've run with less so you know being able to manage yourself and be self-sufficient is really good especially if you can manage your su sustainability and your survivability so that, that's always useful, so that's why I picked it up. Looking in the technician skill tree, we have got basic hardware expert in breacher, and in the oppressor subtree, we got a steady grip and basic lock and load. These skills, apart from steady grip, are pretty much disposable. You can get rid of them if you want to. Uh, it's more just about mobility for me for the lock and load, but I had one skill point left, and I decided to put it onto hardware expert just because I hate loud drills. That's literally it. It's not really about skill or, you know, uh, having some kind of tactical advantage. I just don't like the noise of drills. So we've got that, and I suppose deploying them a bit faster is always nice, but it's mainly just so they can shut up and I can concentrate on shooting enemies and keeping ears out for, you know, cloakers and stuff so there's that we've also got basic lock and load i mean it's disposable because you don't have to be able to hit fire while sprinting and if we look in ghost i got um ace parkour i will cover that in a minute but that's run and reload so i kind of just figured because i had a few points left that the two of them would go well together being able to hit fire and also reload while sprinting it's just more about moving around and kind of speed and maintaining it so that's why i've gone for it no other reason but the main one for steady grip and well the main one for technician is steady grip which is increasing both your accuracy and stability and there's no catches to it it's not while you're stood still or while you're moving so every weapon that we've got will get an extra accuracy and an extra 16 stability and when you look at the stats of my weapons you will notice that that has had quite an effect i can tell you that much 
But looking in the ghost skill tree, we got basic duck and cover and we aced parkour, as I already mentioned. So just being able to sprint, move faster and also being able to run and reload its basic movement skills. And then in silent killer, we got basic second wind, we aced the professional and we aced specialized killing. Now, the eagle eye people of you will notice that what I would normally do is not have ace professional. I would get basic second wind and then uh, ace that and get up to specialized killing. Over this time, I went a little bit different. And I decided that I would ace the professional only because of the extra stability and accuracy. Once again, my gun stats will explain this in a minute, but I want to try and up the stability and accuracy as much as I can, especially for akimbo weapons because they have a base reduction in stability because you're holding two of them. So I'm trying to counteract that as much as I could. And looking to kind of add to that in the fugitive uh, skill tree in Gunslinger, we'll start off with akimbo because that's what I was talking about. Uh, reducing akimbo weapon stability penalty and also having increased ammo capacity. Those of you who see my one down dodge video where I talked about uh, not being having a little glitch with the akimbo where, you know, I switched between builds and I wouldn't have the extra ammo that this grants. I'm still having that. It's still in play. I'm just trying to get on with it and nobody suggested a fix to it. So I'm guessing I'm kind of on my own with this, but... I don't know, I just have to restart the game with this build on and then I'm fine. So, you know, small price to pay. But the rest of the skills in Gunslinger, we aced Equilibrium, aced Gun Nut, aced Desperado and aced Trigger Happy. We left one-handed talent out here because, you know, the extra 15 damage, it's nice, but the rest of it's more important. So we'll go right from the bottom. So first off, we can take out and uh, holster pistols by 33% uh, faster. And we also get extra accuracy with pistols. We also have five bullets extra per mag in pistols, and we can fire the uh, pistols 1.5 times as fast. On top of that, each successful pistol hit gives us a 10% increased accuracy bonus for 10 seconds, which can stack four times. Now, on my level of accuracy, that doesn't matter. You'll, again, you will see in a minute, I'm building it up here. I'm building up the uh, suspense, uh, but that doesn't matter. The only reason we got Desperado is for the ace reloading pistols faster. It just makes life so much easier. Um, and then ace trigger happy every hit with a pistol you gain a 20% damage boost that lasts for two seconds But when aced it lasts for 10 seconds and stacking up four times That means that for 10 seconds you can have an 80% damage boost if you can land just four hits on an enemy That can be pretty uh, heavy especially if you're dealing with say a bulldozer or something So that's you know a really good one to pick up I would say uh, But yeah, so moving on to the revenant subtree we have got nine lives aced swan song aced and basic running from death. Running from death was another one of those things where I had a few extra points and I didn't want to invest up a high tree. But also, like I said with the one down dodge bit video, being able to reload weapons once you got up, especially with the Kimbo pistols, because they can reload really slowly. It's just handy. So you get up, if you're out of ammo, reload your guns, kill everyone around you, and you won't get downed again. Nine lives, it's basic stuff allowed. Being able to uh, get one extra down, especially on one down, if you do try to use this on one down, that's a given. You've got to at least have nine lives basic. Uh, aced, sorry, you've got to have it. So, I mean, that's for any build, really, though. E even on Death Wish, Mayhem, Overkill, having the extra down, it's always handy, and it means you have to go to a Doctor Bag just a little bit less often. Swan Song, you guys know I'm a big fan of it at this point, just being able to have infinite ammo for nine seconds, just uh, almost as a, a reward for being killed. I, I just love it, and it's really good, especially dealing with certain specials. If you, you know, like I've said before, tactical deaths. So, you know, how some people, sometimes when they're doing big, loud jobs, they will do a tactical custody where a certain player will go into custody because they're grey screen, they don't want to use what's left of the doctor bags because maybe there isn't many charges left. And what they do is they purposefully go into custody when, say, an assault's over and they've got a hostage and they know they haven't killed any civilians. So as soon as they die, they can do the trade, they're back in, down's restored, that kind of thing. So it's along that line. It's dying on purpose so that you can have some tactical advantage on the team. You can run out, kill any enemies that are causing grief, and then, you know, die and be revived. So that kind of thing. Uh, but that covers the skills. So it's mainly really fugitive and I suppose mastermind orientated really. But fugitive is where most of the points are invested because it's all about pistols. It's the gunslinger build. But yeah, let's look at the weapons. So my primary, I've picked up the akimbo cross kills. Now I was of, of two minds here whether to go for um, you know different types of pistols. Because from what I'm looking at, there's the really low damage pistols with high ammo pool. There's the medium damage pistols with medium ammo pool. And then there's the high damage pistols with really low ammo pool. And if we look here, cross kills are in the medium, akimbo deagles are in the high, and akimbo bonettis are in the low. Now, personally, while it might seem appealing that with the low damage pistols, you get a great deal more ammo, really, they just don't plug enough damage fast enough for you to get it in there. Like, you know, actually cause real grief. Looking at the stats, I mean, you do have nearly double the rate of fire on the Benetti, so if you can keep, you know, landing the bullets, you will be just as successful, but 
I don't know, I just, I, I like having, you know, a notable amount of damage to when you do hit, you make quite the impact. So, that's just the way I went. But looking at it, as you can see, I talked about my stats, 100 accuracy and 100 stability for my akimbo cross kills. And they're not alone. The secondary signature 40 has both of those to 100 as well. So, that is the real gem of this build. It's having max accuracy and max stability. In other words, you've got the highest chance of your shots actually hitting where you're aiming. And you've got minimum recoil, which is just perfect together. It's absolutely brilliant. And I've tried to get the stats to work so that they exactly match. So, if you look at the stability for the uh, cross kill pistols, it starts at a base of 52. But if you add those two 24s on, it's bang on at 100. So anything that I could do, you know, that was adding too much stability on, I've removed. For instance, with the cross kills before I recorded this, I noticed that I had a stability boost on. And I, then I also realized that if I took that off and put a team boost on, it made no difference to the stats. So I put a team boost on because I love the extra money and XP. But yeah, we will be running these with Monolith Suppressor, Team Boost, uh, Polymer Flashlight, Ergo Grip, and the long vented slide. Not going for extra um, extended mags, just because I don't want to chew through ammo too fast. Because it's medium damage, there is only medium ammo pool. So, you still have to have some balance. And I know that, you know, because you don't deploy ammo, you do have to have some kind of care. And you are going to have to run on ammo pickups from cops. But that doesn't mean that, you know, you should kind of go overboard with ammo and that you should just spray as much as you can because that'll make it even worse. You want to be managing your ammo, not throwing it away. Looking at the secondary, the Signature 40 pistol, we have picked up the Standard Issue Suppressor, a Team Boost, Combined Module, Ergo Grip, and the Long Slide. Same thing again, it gets us exactly up to 100 on both, as far as I know. Uh, team Boost is really nice, and because we don't need accuracy or stability, then we don't need to add them on. Um, and other than that, it just helps the pistol run as best as it can. Uh, but yeah, looking at looking at the skills and the damage, it would be nice to take the pistols both up to 100 damage using um, one-handed talent. Looking at it, if I was to suggest, possibly, I mean, if we get rid of running from death basic, and we get rid of lock and load, hardware expert, what else could we get rid of, possibly? I'm just trying to think if we can manage this. I suppose get rid of forced friendship and stable shot, and then you'd have to get rid of, say, transporter, then, bam, one-handed talent is aced. But it's... It's a lot, and that's a big stretch to make, especially considering, you know, you want to get as many of those kind of little mini skills, like lock and load and stuff. Stuff that is, you know, negligible, but can come in handy in the right hands. So, I don't know, it's personal preference, as I always say, but, you know, sometimes personal preference, to me, I think is the better choice, but it's down to you. So, there's my suggestion for how to get the extra damage boost, but from the footage today, it runs quite well with the damage it's got, so that's something to consider. Melee, we're going to be using the electrical brass knuckles. Throwable, the throwing axe. I've been trying to uh, practice my throwing with, uh, you know, the actual ranged throwables that you can pick up and uh, recycle. So, you know, throwing axes, javelins, shurikens. But the throwing axes are the hardest ones to use, mainly because you throw them and they don't travel very far before they, you know, like bullet, bullet drop kind of kicks in, but obviously they're not bullets. You know, where after a certain amount of distance, they start to drop and head towards the ground. Gravity kicks in. So, practicing with those, they can do a lot of damage, and if you can time the shots right, you can get most specials disposed with one hit, right up to Death Wish, and probably even on one down as well, so, worth considering. Perk deck, we're going to be using the Crook perk deck, only because it does provide a decent amount of dodge, and at the same time, also buffs up your Ballistic Vest, and, you know, for the mix, it's good. On one down, the extra armor is, you know, pretty negligible. I mean, it might not make a great difference, because once you get hit, you're probably going to be downed almost instantly, because they output so much damage, but... For this, because I said it wasn't really exactly one down viable, we're going to run Crook, just because I prefer it. And we'll be bringing Dr. Bags and a lightweight ballistic vest. But yeah, that covers all of these skills and weapons, so let's get into the gameplay and I'll share my final thoughts on the build. The Gunslinger build. This one was more of a kind of personal passion for me. I wanted to get this out because I am a very big fan of pistols. Anyone who knows me will know that I just adore revolvers, handguns, anything like that, especially in loads of first person shooters, Call of Duty, anything like that. I just really like handguns. They make people look so cool, in my opinion. But, you know, it, it's down to me. But, yeah, I wanted to have something that kind of uh, exhibited that. Exhibited that passion. I was able to put it into Payday in a way that was effective and did the job. And I'd like to say that I think I've accomplished it here. It does work really quite well. And at that, I do use it quite a lot on loud if it's not one down. So, you know, obviously the first weakness is that it can't be used in every difficulty within reason. Uh, if somebody would like to try it on one down and let me know how it works, I have tried it myself, but I want to see if anyone else could do it. Let me know. See if the build is viable. I would be really interested to hear you guys' thoughts on that. But, 
yeah, that is a weakness, I suppose. But uh, really, I can't see anyone pulling off one down without a kind of Joker rogue build. Any other builds that people can come up with that actually work on one down, you're very good at the game. You're better than I am if you can figure out better builds than that. But, you know, for instance, armor. I really want a good armor build that can work on one down. I've got an armor build coming up soon, but it's just not viable for one down, I don't think, personally. So, it's, you know, it, it's a tough one. Like, for me, with one down, I just kind of think that rogue is the only way to go. It's the way that a lot of the community seems to have shifted to the ones the rogue tree. But, um, I don't know. But looking at the actual strengths of this build, having a lot of ammo is a very good thing. And, you know, some builds do use weapons that have reduced amount of ammo. So the one, rogue one down dodge build I have, you know, there's not a great deal of ammo in the Akimbo, Akimbo Deagles. So, you know, you've got one up there. There is slightly reduced damage, but provided you can land all the shots, you might have better uh, bullet econ economy. So you end up having more bullets overall, using less to kill enemies. And, you know, at the end of the day, your ammo goes further, but still does, you know, respectable amounts of damage. And... Up to Death Wish, you know, the the increase in health on cops, as as they get tougher, the guns can pretty much handle it. And on the lower difficulty, especially from normal, like up to Overkill and Mayhem, there's not really much difference between how long it takes to kill specials using this build, at least from what I've found. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's really good. And the throwing axe is very handy. I've noticed with this build, it works quite well. If your Kimbo's have run out of ammo, like I said, they take a while to reload. So if you're kind of struggling, you just throw the throwing axe. And if you land the shot right, then bam, that's it. They're, they're gone. And I really heard that voice crack him in the back of the background there. That was really embarrassing. We'll just uh, pretend that never happens, but hey-ho. So, yeah. I mean, in terms of other weaknesses, I can't really see a lot. But I can't see any any other strengths that make this build better than any other. It's just another way to play Payday. And I think that's what you got to keep in mind with a lot of these lab builds. They're just different ways of achieving the same objective. And, you know, it's down to what you like. Do you like running around with handguns like I do? Do you like being a giant tank that can just soak up all the bullets like a sponge? It's, again, as I always say, it's personal preference. That will be on my headstone at this rate. But, yeah, so that pretty much covers it. There's not a great deal that I want to talk about on, on that. It was more just exhibiting the build, showing you guys how it works, and putting in a bit of gameplay. So, other than that, there's not a lot else to share. All the skills have been covered. Um, I will say the only thing I will note is that this is better than the one down dodge build in some ways because there are a lot more pistol skills. In the last one with the, with the one down rogue build, there was... Uh, pistol orientation in there so I was using pistols for primary and secondary however I didn't get many pistol skills because I was too busy focusing on survivability with jokers and, and so on and so forth so that is one advantage we do have so the increased accuracy boosts reloading pistols faster increased uh, damage boost for actually hitting targets from right at the top with desperado you know those things can make a bit of a difference and you could argue then that you know, effects that you're using, say, Akimbo Deagles, if not better, because the damage boost you're getting is really pushing it up. Perhaps if you were to perhaps incorporate uh, crits into this build, so, you know, critical hits and, you know, having all those detection, trying to incorporate that with the weapons that I've used, you could have a complete powerhouse. You know, you'd have the extra damage boost, you'd have crit hits, you'd be able to deal with anything almost instantly. However, I just didn't have enough points to put crits into it. I need more kind of time to research into that and just, you know, see how I can balance points out, but... Other than that, that sums it up. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. As always, leave your thoughts about the builds that I've been doing down in the description. Let me know if you appreciate it, whether you think it's worked for you. And if you think there's any weaknesses, let me know. I'd be very interested to hear what you guys have to say that might not be as good about the build. I'd like to see how I could improve it, possibly. But other than that, as always, leave any suggestions for payday content down in the description. Not in the description, that's not where you leave comments. I am an absolute idiot, I've only been doing this for two and a half years. Whoops. This video, I just keep making loads of mess ups. What is wrong with me today? Hey, um, yeah, comment, that's the best place. Comment any suggestions for heists, builds, solo stalks, anything. As always, I look at every comment, I respond to any that's necessary. And yeah, just keep in touch with me. And I will be, you know, happy to amend to anyone's requests. So, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. And other than that, Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.